Good morning, folks. The biggest sunspot of this solar cycle continued flaring over the last 24 hours. We took a double peaked X class flare that just crept up to the X line, hovered a bit, and then fell back down, taking a break that continues into this morning. Just as with the previous flares, there was no significant CME to this one, no major ejecta, and no danger to Earth. In fact, as that sunspot turns away, we'll focus more on the incoming coronal hole down south negative polarity of fairly good size, easily visible in 211 angstroms with some thin dark plasma filaments turning in behind it. The much bigger filament is up north. That large dark rope is well over a hundred thousand kilometers long, needs to be monitored. The sunspot situation is this, big group turning away with a split developing in the main trailing negative umbra and perhaps some positive intrusion in the middle. The delta spot with magnetics mixing is still quite strong and more flares should probably be expected as it exits the disk. Sunspots trailing the big active region are smaller and lacking any real complexity. Solar wind density in orange with some spikes the last few hours which kept our magnetosphere from calming completely just below unstable perturbations now. We took a gamma ray burst from Aries this morning first one in four days. Folks, most of the time our ionospheric delay looks like this, but every so often a spike off the charts occurs and it's into white, like last night near Hawaii. Speaking of which, the volcano there is increasing in activity and still a concern for nearby residents. This USGS feed shows the activity. The ionosphere anomaly was also due south of Hurricane Anna, further suggesting an earth spot connection between the storms and the islands. But before coming back to the storms, I've linked this from the Weather Channel. Beautiful billow clouds seen from all over the place. Not as mortifying as those undulatus asperatus clouds, but still a nice rare sight. That cyclone formation we eyed days ago in the Indian Ocean now has the whole world's attention as it readies to swing out and around back to far western India. Eyes open there. Back to Hurricane Anna, north of Hawaii, and ready to shoot right at the southwest Canadian coastline, hopefully without triggering Earth spot seismicity. Got two new systems to watch, straddling Central America at this time. In the U.S. and Canada, we still have that heat and moisture draw into the Pacific system that will continue pounding the west, while the low in the east is stuck north of a strong high-pressure cell to the south. Rain, storms, and snow are possible out west, while the high pressure in the southeast will keep the precipitation mostly north of the border. Same two lows in effect here. The big North Atlantic system aided by a flow from the east and a self-contained low to the southeast still churning atop Turkey and the surrounding nations. Storm zones follow those systems and their convergences as usual. I'd love some weather shares. Down under, the story is simple. We've got convergences across the south and across to New Zealand. The collision of different air masses brings us our watches there this evening. Mobile Observatory Project is in Little Rock, Arkansas today from 3 to 5 p.m. at the Museum of Discovery. Details and our full tour schedule can be found at observatoryproject.com. Helio viewer still lagging, so we're at SDO for shots of our start to close. It's 6.35 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.35 a.m. Local. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.